in today's lecture we discuss about closure properties of regular languages some of the closure properties of regular languages are very straightforward from the definition that uh, you have already observed for example if you say the regular the class of regular languages is closed with respect to union that is straightforward from the definition or we can say that the class of regular languages is closed with respect to concatenation that is also straightforward from the definition and uh, the class of reg regular languages is closed with respect to clean star that is also uh, the part of the definition now several set theoretic uh, uh, closure properties that we can see because a language is a set because this is a subset of sigma star so several set theoretic questions we can have and uh, see like whether uh, the class of regular languages are closed with respect to those set theoretic constructs let us go one after uh, another systematically and uh, and main uh, point here you can observe that these closure properties will be helpful to understand further some of the new languages are regular for example if you have identified a language which is union of some of the known like regular languages you can use the definition or you know the closure property uh, to say that the new language is regular so let us first look at this complement so that means the question is if you are given a regular language l whether l complement is regular this is not straightforward from the definition as you understand now the answer is the class of regular languages is closed with respect to complement that means if you are given a regular language l l complement is regular how do we observe this you consider a dfa for a given regular language and then you can do this by interchanging the roles of final and uh, non final states you can quickly understand that the complement of a regular language is regular that means for example if you consider a language l and a corresponding to which let a be a dfa as given here q sigma delta q not f now you construct a dash state set is same as q uh, as in a the alphabet of course is same then the transition map also we are not going to change the initial state is same but the final states now the original non final states you make them as final states and uh, the original final states you make them as non final states that is by interchanging the roles of final and non final states if you construct if you construct then you understand that the language accepted with a new dfa is complement of the given language so this is the construction of a dash now you can quickly ascertain that if you take any x in sigma star if x is in l complement that means x is not in l that is if you put x in in the initial state of the original dfa then it will not reach to a final state if it is not reaching to a final state that means in the new dfa that is a dash you see that uh, delta cap of q not at x by uh, sub, uh, by supplying to the initial state you will be getting a final state of the new dfa and hence you conclude that this x is accepted within new dfa and as you see you know these are equivalent statements all what are what are all written here and hence we can conclude that the const the new constructed dfa is uh, precisely accepting the complement of the given language now if you have already identified a language is regular then its complement is to understand that the complement uh, is uh, if you want to see that a language is uh, regular if it is complement of a known regular language you can conclude quickly that it is also regular now let us look at certain corollaries of this result for example intersection you consider the class of regular language is closed with respect to intersection why because the intersection has a relation with respect to complements and unions as i mean by the de morgan law as stated here l1 intersection l2 is l1 complement union l2 complement whole complement this is the de morgan law 
Now, if you assume that L 1 and L 2 are regular as we have understood that L 1 complement is regular, L 2 complement is regular and hence union of regular languages that is from the definition this is a regular language and a complement of a regular language once again you use the uh, result just we have observed and understand that intersection of two regular languages is regular. So, given a language if you want to see that that is regular if it is intersection of some known regular languages you can quickly conclude using this result that it is regular, but one may be interested uh, to find a DFA or an NFA a finite automaton for a given uh, language to say that it is regular for which I will give you an alternative proof for this result that means, a, construct, uh, 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 a constructive proof here we give a DFA to accept intersection of given two regular languages. So, what do you do you in general let me give you the construct here consider two DFA say a 1 and a 2 let me call with the state sets q 1, q 2 and of course, common alphabet is sigma and the respective uh, transition maps are delta 1 and delta 2 and the initial states here you may call it as q 1 and q 2 and the final states f 1 and f 2 for each here. So, I am considering two DFS a i with the as given here and now if you set a DFA as given here, this is the quintuple, the Cartesian product of the respective state sets of the given DFA and of course, the common alphabet sigma is the input alphabet for this and uh, delta you define point wise. That means, if you take any state in the new DFA, it is of the form a pair p q. Now, if you take any symbol a in sigma, what do you do? what are the transition that it is taking place in the first DFA you give as a first component and similarly, in the second DFA what are the transition is it is taking you give it as a second component and that is how this delta is defined and the initial state is the initial uh, the component first uh, initial state component of the first DFA and the initial state of the second DFA we take it as components and declare that as q 1 q 2 here that is the initial state and uh, final states is f 1 cross f 2 here because f 1 is final states of first DFA, f 2 is final states of second DFA you consider f 1 cross f 2. Now, if you if you construct a DFA like this you can understand that this new DFA a is will accept the intersection of L 1 and L 2 where L 1 is the language accepted by a 1 and L 2 is the language accepted by a 2. For this, for this first observe first observe that delta cap of p q for any state p q of the new DFA if you supply any string x in sigma star it is precisely delta cap delta 1 cap p x comma delta 2 cap q x. This you can observe by applying induction on the length of the string x that is not a big deal you can uh, take it as an exercise and try that this is happening here. Now, I use this to quickly understand that the new DFA accepts precisely L 1 intersection L 2. Now, take uh, a string that is accepted by the new DFA A. That means, by definition uh, uh, by this observation you can say that you can say that the component wise that is going in f 1 cross f 2, because if you say a string is in the language accepted by a this is the definition that is going to the final state by supplying this string x in the initial state of the DFA. And now, by this observation you can say that this is these are the values of that you are getting in f 1 and f 2. That means, if you say a pair is in f 1 cross f 2 the component wise they belong delta 1 cap of q 1 x is in f 1 and delta 2 cap of q 2 x is in f 2 and now here now you have got the x is in l 1 and x the x is in l 2 as well and hence x is in l 1 intersection l 2 and you understand that this is you can follow conversely that if it is in the intersection this is what is happening and if it is in l 1 
this is the situation with the first DFA and this is the situation with the second DFA and these components if you take it as a pair that is in F 1 cross F 2 and uh, what we have observed by in this line you can again go back to here because these two are equal and hence you can say that x is in uh, x is in the language accepted by A. So, this constructive proof gives you a DFA which accepts intersection of two regular languages. Now, let me give you an example because for example, if you consider this all those strings in 0 1 star with the property that the number of zeros in x is even and the number of ones in x is odd. Suppose, if you consider this language we can observe that it is regular. Of course, you if you know that the num this with this property if you consider the strings it is regular and with this property if you consider the strings over 0 1 if it is regular from the previous result that means intersection of two regular languages is regular you can get it. You see that this DFA this we have constructed earlier this DFA accepts all those strings over 0 1 with even number of zeros. Similarly, you know that this DFA accepts all those strings with odd number of ones. Now, from the result you can say the given language is regular, but using the construction you can give the DFA that accepts the given lang uh, this language. Now, you consider the Cartesian product of these states here you have q 1 q 2 p 1 p 2. Now, there are four pairs that is q 1 p 1 q 1 p 2 q 2 p 1 q 2 p 2 let me call uh, them as s 1 s 2 s 3 s 4 and then in the Cartesian product the DFA what you have to do you have to put the respective transitions component wise and construct the DFA that is the construction given to you. So, if you construct using that you will get this and now you see from the construction I have to declare S 2 as final state because in the first DFA q 1 is final state and the second DFA p 2 is final state. Now, q 1 p 2 that is state S 2 if you declare that as final state from the previous result this particular DFA gives you gives uh, uh, the, this particular DFA accepts the language given to you. Now, by choosing appropriate final states here you can vary this for example, if I choose S 3 what is the meaning of S 3 choosing as final state instead of S 2 this q 2 p 1 in q if you consider the first DFA q 2 as final state instead of q 1 you understand that the number of uh, zeros accepted by this so, the number of zeros in any string accepted by this DFA is odd and uh, S 3 this is p 1 if this is if this is the situation if this is the final state with the second DFA then the number of ones accepted uh, number of ones in a string accepted by this DFA is is even and thus you can see if you make S 3 as final state instead of S 2 this accepts all those strings in which the number of zeros is odd and number of ones is even. For example, if you consider S 4 as a, uh, as, a uh, as a final state instead of S 2 that is q 2 p 2. So, q 2 if you consider in the first DFA this accepts all those strings in which the number of zeros is odd and in this case number of ones is odd and thus intersection that is number of zeros is odd and number of ones is also odd. Similarly, if you consider S 1 this R now if you consider say S 2 and S 3 or any combination S 2 S 4 both of them that means then this or this the property pertaining to S 2 or the property pertaining to S 4 or if you consider you know any of the combinations you understand that you know this particular construct is helpful to understand that various combinations of uh, you know languages 
with the number of uh, zeros and number of uh, uh, with the property of number of zeros and number of ones either even odd can be observed here so this construction the cartesian product construction of course here we have observed that the intersection of uh, two regular language is regular but this construction will, will will be helpful to understand some of the complicated language to see they are regular for example you consider this set of all those strings over 0 1 in which and the strings have number of zeros is even if and only if number of ones is odd if you consider this language you see this is a conditional statement whenever x has even number of zeros then the number of ones should be odd and conversely so the condition is looking little bit complicated so what you you can you know little bit analyze this little bit analyze this this logical statement and formulate the appropriate uh, connectives in, in terms of uh, you know and or not or whatever and the previous construct that cartesian product construct may be helpful to uh, observe that this particular language is regular you can take it this as an exercise and try uh, to show that this particular language is regular now let me consider another set uh, set uh, theoretic construct this is set difference and see that from the previous results that means the complement and intersection if you consider the class of regular languages is closed under set difference that means if l1 and l2 are regular then l1 minus l2 that is also regular you know that l1 difference l1 minus l2 is essentially l1 intersection l2 complement this is a set theoretic property related to set difference you see if l2 is regular l2 complement is regular l1 is regular is given and l2 complement is regular intersection of two regular languages is regular so you can understand that set difference you know uh, set difference that preserves regularity or regular languages now let me give you an example consider the language a power n such that n greater than or equal to 5 that means all those strings over single letter alphabet whose length is bigger than or equal to 5 this is regular of course constructing a dfa is not a big deal for you but you, let me use this you take l1 to be l of a star that means the language uh, represented by the regular expression a star and hence it is regular and l2 you consider these strings empty string a a square a cube a power 4 consider these strings and you know a finite set is a regular language this is regular and this is l1 is regular l2 is regular l1 minus l2 is also regular and l1 minus l2 is nothing else but the give uh, the language under question here from this i will give you one impo one important observation that is in general if you remove finitely many strings from a regular language that leaves a regular language this property will be useful in several contexts because you see that you have come up with a language in which certain things are missing if the missing things uh, from a known like regular language if what are the missing strings if they are finitely many then you can conclude that the given language is also regular now i consider this construct that is reversal you know reverse of a string now the property here is if l is regular then l power r that is defined by by considering all those strings by reversing the strings of l l power r is equal to x power set of all x power r such that x is in l so take a string from l reverse it and put it in l power r so this is what is l power r and now i observe that if l is regular l power r is also regular for this i require uh, a small uh, result that is for every regular language l there exists a finite automaton a with a single final state such that l of a is equal to l 
So, here if you are considering a DFA, what I will do if you are considering a DFA, assume L of A is equal to L, for L we construct. Suppose the DFA is like this, certain states are there, some initial state is there, certain final states are there, assume some n number of final states are there. Now, what I would say certain transitions here, yeah. what I would suggest you consider a new state, you consider a new state outside the state set of given uh, DFA, you make that as a final state and uh, remove that they are final states, you just make them as non final states, just these are non final states, whatever the final states that you have earlier in this, but you put epsilon transitions from here to the new state, epsilon transitions. And you see any string that is accepted by A, this is the original DFA, what, what is the situation? Any string, if you put it in the initial state here, it takes the transitions and finally, end up with a final state here. But since there is an epsilon transition from each final state to this new final state, the original final state to the new final state, now you understand that this particular string, you know, uh, using this first particular string from initial state to the final state, you can always reach. And uh, when you can reach to this final state, any string that is ending, if you put in the initial state ending in this state only, you can reach to this fin new final state. Thus, you can understand that this version of NFA can be constructed with unique final state and uh, which precisely accepts the given language L. That is, you know, if you consider Q sigma delta Q naught F a DFA accepting L, what do you do? You set B to B Q union singleton P a new state P and of course, the original alphabet transitions, all the original transitions of the given DFA will be lying there. In addition to that, you take the transitions from the final states to the new final state, because this p is declared as new final state, the original initial state is the initial state. So, this delta dash is defined as if this q is in the original state and a in sigma, then as it is delta q a. And uh, if this q is in the final state, so in addition to these transitions, we are declaring that through epsilon transitions, you will be reaching to the final state. That is what is the construction I have shown. So, if you construct a finite automaton, of course, this is an NFA, then you can understand that this accepts the same language, but you have only one final state. So, now once you have this, what you will what I will do given a regular language L, I consider a finite automaton with unique final state. So, given L, I consider a finite automaton with unique, of course, initial state is always unique. Now, I have only one final state. Now, you have certain transitions here, you have certain transitions in this finite automaton A. What I would suggest you now, whenever you have an arrow in A, for example, from P to Q, if you have an arrow under A, you simply reverse this arrow in the new DFA. So, let me call this DFA to be say A R uh, finite automaton, let me, let me not say it is a DFA, because whatever that we have constructed with unique uh, uh, final state that is a non-deterministic uh, non automaton NFA. So, what do you do? You the final state of the finite automaton A, you make this as initial state and the initial state of this, you make that as a final state and whenever you have an arrow here from P to Q, you reverse that arrow, that is all. So, the transitions will now flow back from final state to the initial, initial state here. Thus, in A power R, you can understand that whatever is the string accepted in A, its reversal will be accepted in the new 
finite automaton because you know you take a string a1 a2 an that you sub, uh, uh, put, uh, apply it in the initial state here you are reaching to the final state now since arrows are reversed what are the edges that you have here they are reversed you can understand that by applying that particular string the reversal of the string a1 a2 an in this state you will come back to this you will come back to this state so now what do you do you give a formal construction so an exercise here is give a formal construction of a power r you see when i have demonstrated the idea that if a language is accepted by dfa or you know finite automaton so for every regular language there is a finite automaton with unique initial state i have demonstrated like you have to construct this way and of course here you have to observe that the language accepted by b is nothing else but l so this is a part of exercises and now you have one more exercise first you give the formal construction whatever the idea i have explained here you give a formal construction here so uh, of a power r and observe that and observe that this new automaton accepts precisely l power r so take this as an exercise and give a formal uh, proof that if l is regular l power r is regular now what are the properties so far we have discussed using this let me give you an example using all these properties we conclude that uh, a particular language is regular is a very important language that you feel once you, i give this once i present this language consider the alphabet with eight symbols say a not to a7 what are these symbols they are essentially the binary representation in this form of the numbers decimal numbers 0 to 7 that is a not is triple 0 0 0 like this a1 is 0 0 1 and so on a7 is 1 1 1 so you know now what is a not what is a1 and so on now a string over the sigma this alphabet is said to represent correct binary addition if correct binary addition if the first row i will say that is bi1 dash bi2 dash and so on bi and dash that is the first row of the of each symbol and uh, plus second row of each symbol is equal to third row of each symbol because what are the string that you have considered ai1 ai2 ain if you put them side by side the first row of each symbol plus uh, second row of each symbol if you consider those strings these are these are the binary numbers it should be equal to the third row of each symbol what are the string that you are getting for example a5 a1 a6 a5 represents correct addition because this a5 a1 a6 a5 if you consider what do you have essentially let me write here 1011 a5 a1 a6 a5 if you consider a5 is essentially this 1 0 1 a1 is 0 0 0 oh sorry this is 0 0 1 a6 is 1 1 0 
A5 again is 1 0 1. We say this string represents correct addition because if you consider this first row that is 1 0 1 1, the second row that is 0 0 1 0. If you sum up these two, you get this 1 1 0 1 and thus I say that this string a 5, a 1, a 6, a 5 over sigma represents correct addition. For example, if you take this a 5, a 0, a 6, a 5, if you put the, the, the symbol side by side and see the first row and second row, if you take up the sum that is not equal to the third row and thus you see a 5, a 0, a 6, a 5 over this alphabet that does not represent correct addition. So, now you consider the language over sigma which contains all those strings that represent correct addition. That is all those strings a i 1, a i 2, a i n or sigma star. If you sum up the first row with the second row that should be equal to third row. Consider those strings. We observe that it is regular. That means essentially we are understanding that this binary addition you can represent a language of this form and we can see that particular language is regular. Now, if you remember we have constructed a millimission to perform the addition in which whatever the uh, format that we have followed we are precisely adopting the same format here rather there you have considered a pair as input and uh, you know the particular bit as output. Here the third bit is also included in the input and we have considered each symbol as a triplet and thus you have 8 symbols here. So, among these over these 8 symbols we have formulated the strings and we consider we, we consider only those strings which represents correct addition as defined here. Now, we observe that this particular language is regular. You follow the same pattern as millimission for carry 0 state carry 1 state and uh, you can observe very quickly that you can identify an NFA accepting this particular language. Let me present that here. This is how the millimission we have constructed there only thing we have mentioned for example, here if you have 0 1 1 there we have mentioned 0 1 as input 1 as output because this is a carry 0 state and this is carry 1 state. And for example, here if you give 0 0 as input in the 0 carry state you will have 0 as output in case of millimission here we made it as a triplet because 0 0 0. So, for convenience I am writing this is horizontally 0 0 0, but you know the what is the symbol this is vertically we are writing in the bracket that 0 0 0. So, likewise here for each state I have only 4 symbols used for 0 carry state and 1 carry state. So, this among these symbols you know depending on the carry that if you add for the first 2 symbols the third symbol will be reflected as a third component of this triplet and thus we have constructed here an NFA and now you can quickly understand by you know recollecting the construction of millimission or right here also. If you take the string like this a 5, a 1, a 6, a 5 what you are doing you are summing up these two and whatever is the corresponding symbol that is given as the third symbol here in the triplet. And if you have some carry here that carry will be considered while counting while uh, while summing up while summing up the components of the second symbol to look at the answer for the uh, uh, to look at the answer in the third component. For example, here 1 1 that is you see 1 1 when you are adding whatever is coming up, but what we have to look at here is when you are adding when you are adding these things because 1 0 1 1 and this is 0 0 1 0 when I am adding up this this 1 0 that is 1 here when I am adding 1 1 here that is 1 0 here you have 0 as the uh, you know result and but you have 1 here as a carry. So, when you have 1 carry here so that is going that is changing the state there the input is 0 0 but you have 1 carry. So, the in the result it is reflecting 1 uh, 1 is reflected 
but you look at when I am when I am giving the string a 5, a 1, a 6, a 5, I am not getting these transitions because these transitions are essentially carried from a 5, a 6, a 1, a 5. In this direction if you feed to the constructed NFA here, then it represents the correct addition because you are adding from right to left, not from uh, left to right because the carry is important when you are coming from this side to this side in the usual uh, way of adding to binary numbers. And thus you understand here whatever is the string accepted by this, those, those symbols that you are adding uh, component wise from right to left and hence the strings which are accepted here is the elements of L power R and of course, since we made this initial state, this initial state as final state, we have one more string that is empty string accepted by this. But what do we require? We require reversals of the strings in L power R, but we do not want this epsilon as well. Now, what do you do? You apply these properties. This is the language accepted by this NFA and hence this, this language is regular. You can safely remove finitely many strings from a regular language to observe that the resultant language is regular that property we have observed. And thus what I would suggest first you remove this. What is the resultant one? That is L power R. And from that property you say that L power R is regular. Now, since now since if x power r power r is x you know this property this is the property of uh, uh, reversals of the string you can understand that if you consider l power r power r because for each string again you take and obtain the reversal that is what is essentially l and hence since l power r is regular its power that is l only where l is given precisely here. So, you conclude we can conclude that for L for this language we have a finite automaton and hence this language is regular. See what are the properties so far we have uh, discussed like reversal of a uh, language is uh, regular language is regular intersection and uh, differences. So, this uh, particular example uh, has demonstrated some of the things and understand uh, to understand that, but the language is looking little bit complicated, but you see uh, applying these properties we can conclude applying these closure properties we can conclude that the language is regular. Now, let me introduce one more that is right quotient this is new because so far whatever that we have discussed these are the this, uh, all these things we have already uh, defined earlier this operations. Now, this is a new operation that we introduce here that is right quotient between languages. How do I define this? Let L 1 and L 2 be two languages over sigma and alphabet. Right quotient of L 1 by L 2 we denote it by L 1 by L 2 is a language comprising all those strings x in sigma star such that there is y in L 2 such that x y is in L 1. That means, you see if you have any string x y in L 1 and uh, the, there is a suffix in L 2, you can remove that suffix and the remaining thing you can put it in L 1 by L 2 that is how it is uh, defined and this you can do it for any string and uh, the resultant language you have to construct. Let us look at examples. Consider because this is a finite language, so that you can understand the things very quickly. Consider L1 to be this having four strings 1, 2, A, A, B, B, A, B, B, A, B, A, and in L2 I simply considered A, A, B. If you want to have L1 by L2, what I have to do? These two strings, wherever that you get as subscript uh, suffix, those suffixes you remove and what are the remaining prefix that you will be considering in L 1 by L 2 that is the definition. Now, you see A is suffix of this and this and the resultant strings now here it is this A 
for the first string a this is a suffix and the remaining prefix is epsilon and hence epsilon will be in L 1 by L 2 and a is suffix of this string also and if you remove this a the resultant string is b a b that will be in L 1 by L 2. Similarly, if you look at a b, a b is suffix for this for this these two strings and uh, as this is suffix of this and the remaining prefix is epsilon. So, epsilon will go L 1 by L 2 already it is there and now for this string the remaining uh, prefix is b. So, b will go in L 1 by L 2. So, L 1 by L 2 is now epsilon b a b and b. So, these three strings are there in L 1 by L 2. Consider so, let me consider some infinite language in so L 3 is 1 0 star 1 given by this regular expression that means you know 1 0 star 1 means this is the regular for this regular expression the language is 1 0 power n 1 such that n greater than or equal to 0 and L 4 is considered to be 1 this is given as L 3 represented by this L 4 is given as 1 the regular expression that means, this is singleton 1. Now, what is L 3 by L 4? Suppose, if one questions you consider all those strings which is having 1 as suffix in L 3 and re remove that suffix and all the prefixes you collect. All right. So, a general string is of this form 1 0 power n 1. So, in general for each string 1 is there as suffix and thus by removing that you get this is 1 0 star 1 0 star. Now, the question is now the question is is there any other string will come into the picture. Here since the regular expression this is 1 0 star 1 and the strings are typically of this form every string has 1 as suffix and only that suffix you can remove and the remaining strings are this 1 0 power n of course, for each n greater than equal to 0 and hence you can conclude very quickly that L 3 by L 4 L 3 by L 4 is simply 1 0 star. Now, let me consider one more example consider L 5 to be 0 star 1 0 star. Now, if you consider L 5 by 0 star what is that? As L 5 is given to be 0 star 1 0 star. Now, if you take the quotient with 0 star it is not that just uh, it is not something like this do not get confused with this example that is in the previous example what has happened if you consider the regular expression 1 0 star 1 by 1 what we have got this is 1 0 star it does not mean that we have cancelled this 1 1 and to obtain this this is not the uh, situation. You cannot adopt the same to conclude here something like 0 star 1 0 star by 0 star by cancelling 0 star 0 star if you write 0 star 1 this is wrong. What you have to do you consider from the definition you consider the strings in which 0 power n because 0 star is having 0 power n such that n greater than equal to 0. So, any string from this that is the typically of the form 0 power n which is having this as a subscript uh, suffix and that particular suffix you remove and the re resultant string that you take it in L 5 by 0 star. Now, you see for example, if you consider epsilon of course, for any string epsilon is suffix and all the strings are coming into the picture because of epsilon because L 5 by singleton epsilon if you look at all the strings are coming 
and even if you take say for example single zero you see here zero star one zero star this is having you know all possible number of zeros as sub, uh, suffixes so that is zero power m one say zero power n such that m n independently greater than or equal to zero so this is the language here since all possible number of suffixes of zeros are available you take anything the remaining string is of the form 0 power m 1 say 0 power n 1 where n 1 can assume any natural number and here you can observe that it is in fact l 5 that is 0 star 1 0 star all strings will come in l 5 by 0 star. And now if you consider 1 0 star of course as you see in the arithmetic here you may feel it, but of course you have to do that calculation by looking at the possible subscripts here this one will be helpful to understand that this is uh, you know 0 star. And now if you consider L 5 by 1 that is the language containing singleton 1 you understand that it is 0 star. So, this is the quotient the operation quotient between languages. Now, the result is if L is a regular language then so is L by L dash for any language L dash. So, that means, the quotient with any arbitrary language the quotient of a regular language with respect to any arbitrary language is regular that is what we are proving here that is the result consider a regular language and an arbitrary language L dash what do you do? Since you have a uh, since L is regular you have a DFA let me assume A to be the DFA here. Now, set A dash to be the same state set same in of course, alphabet is same and now you consider here L and L dash over the same alphabet sigma assume uh, this way and now transitions are same initial state is same, but the final states we change it this way. Consider all those states in Q by applying any string x in that particular state if you reach to your final state then you consider that state to be the new final state that is in f dash. You can quickly understand that this is a DFA and uh, you can observe that this DFA accepts L by L dash. So, you can take this as an exercise take any string x that is in L of A dash and observe that this is in L by L dash. So, this is a formal proof to understand that L of A dash is L by L dash you can take this as an exercise and conclude that.